So I want to make a video comparing and contrasting uh, Kyle Hendricks, who is one of the slower throwers in the big leagues, to, uh, to Walker Bueller, who I've broken down before and is one of the, the harder throwing uh, pitchers in the big leagues. Uh, Kyle Hendricks, as most of you know, uh, he averages about 87 miles an hour, which ranks uh, third percentile in the big leagues. Uh, I would imagine that the guys that throw a little slower than that are probably submarine type guys. Um, so he is one of the slowest throwers. Walker Bueller averages a hair over 97. Uh, so I want to kind of break down a side by side to show uh, mechanically why why that is to some extent, uh, because I do believe that you know theoretically Hendricks could be throwing significantly harder. Not that he should. Not that he should change anything. Uh, but I want to use it as a uh, kind of a teaching tool uh, for those who are trying to maximize their velocity on why you know his mechanics are not necessarily geared towards maximum velocity in terms of how he moves. So. A few things I want to highlight. Obviously, from the start, they're both go over the head out of the windup. They're in relatively similar positions at this point in the delivery. But as we get into the rest of the throw, that's when things uh, begin to change. So I want to highlight peak leg lift. So right about here, uh, this is a very telling frame right here. Uh, you can see that Hendricks gets very hunched over. Uh, we talk a lot about staying uh, staying tall and stacked um, over, the, over the pelvis and over the heel. Um, you can see that Hendricks has already begun to tip forward. So he's, he's really scrunching and hunching over uh, forward towards third base side, whereas Walker Bueller is staying tall. He's staying stacked. If you uh, draw a line through the top of his head, through the center of mass, through the heel, uh, you'll see he's he's got, if anything, actually a slight, uh, slight backward lean. But he's staying tall and stacked over that pelvis. Uh, that's going to allow him to to stay loaded as he moves forward into the linear move, into the hinge. Uh, whereas Hendricks, uh, you know, he's already kind of, preset this uh, this position where it's going to be tough not to end up uh, toe and quad driven as he gets into his linear move. So uh, it's possible to escape this position, but it's, it's a lot less likely. It's a lot more difficult when from the very start of the throw, uh, you've already kind of uh, preset some bad positions or less efficient uh, biomechanical positions. So let's get into the hinge. Let's get into the forward move. You'll see that uh, Bueller's obviously doing a good job staying tall, staying stacked, staying back as he moves forward. Uh, you'll see that Hendricks has already dumped into the quad so his knee is way out over the toe um, that's not necessarily a, a, hu a huge problem in and of itself um, but you'll see that in his case it is linked to that heel coming off the ground significantly early uh, whereas uh, walker bueller is doing a much better job again staying back staying in contact uh, with that entire back foot uh, which gives him that back foot anchor and that, that single leg stability um, to have better direction to his throw uh, you'll see his heel is still in contact with the ground, whereas uh, Hendricks, that heel's already beginning to come up. You can see, again, quad-driven, uh, toe-driven. And so he begins to kind of leak open, and this, this pelvis opens over uh, many frames. So he's, he's already beginning kind of the process of opening his pelvis uh, very early, whereas Walker Bueller does a good job of keeping that pelvis closed during the forward move, and he kind of snaps it open at the last second. So it's just really that ability to stay loaded, stay back, uh, stay in contact, with that back heel as long as possible, ideally through the through the back glute and, uh, and maintaining that stack. And so Hendricks, again, gets a little bit quad driven there. And then uh, during the unload, um, you know, one issue with arm timing, uh, the arm can be too early or it can be too late. And, you know, again, it's not a, not a commentary on his ability as a pitcher, um, but just biomechanical efficiency. So when the arm is too early, when that, uh, that hand kind of lifts up the arm, uh, kind of like the pie throwing uh, pie throwing arm action and it gets up too early then what happens is there's a little bit of a lag there's a little bit of a lag and you don't necessarily capture as much of that uh, stretch reflex through the pec if we look at walker bueller just a couple frames two frames before landing this is where his uh, this is where the ball is this is where his arm is so he's able to capture this smooth loop of energy and snap that arm into flip up at the last second still gets up and then he's able to capture that, that whip-like loop of energy. His arm doesn't get up for two, three, four frames and kind of lag there. Uh, you'll see that Hendricks kind of lifts the, lifts the ball up. It's a very hand-driven arm action. It's not necessarily creating that uh, scapular fish hook action or that, that arm spiral uh, loop-like path that Walker Bueller does a good job. Uh, credit to Paul Nyman for that, that fish hook terminology. That's kind of a way to picture this this whip mechanism. Um, but again, the arm gets up at the last second versus getting up early and, and kind of lagging, uh, being too early. And then the final thing I want to highlight for this video, just a quick breakdown, obviously, is uh, is layback. So uh, you'll see Bueller has uh, pretty close to 180 degrees of layback. Again, hard to get an exact number from a front view. 
But if we go to uh, to Kyle Hendricks and his max layback, you can see he doesn't quite get to uh, to that full layback. And so he's not able to apply force to the ball over a nearly as long of an arc of motion. He's not able to get nearly that same uh, that same elastic uh, you know stretch reflex out of the shoulder joint uh, because he's not able to access that that full layback. And so he ends up having a little bit more of kind of a pushing follow through where it's kind of this linear forward crunching uh, follow through over his front leg rather than aggressive late rotation of the torso uh, over that uh, lead leg block. So uh, hopefully this was informative. Um, you know, uh, you can see right here too, a little bit of a soft front leg on Kyle Hendricks. Uh, but hopefully this was informative. Uh, just highlight a couple things going through a uh, video of Hendricks and uh, you know, maybe he's not necessarily the, uh, you know, genetically as, as fast twitch or as incredible of an athlete, uh, you know, from a velocity standpoint as a guy like Walker Bueller, but uh, certainly a big piece of why he doesn't throw hard is his actual movement patterns themselves. Uh, his, his patterns are not as geared towards high velocity. It's not what he's trying to do as a pitcher. It's not how he gets batters out. Uh, but again, for pitchers who are out there struggling with, with their patterns, who are trying to maximize their velocity, um, you know, hopefully this kind of is a good uh, a good side-by-side -side comparison to you know, really show you uh, show you what biomechanical efficiency looks like and, and some of the things that uh, maybe Kyle Hendricks, uh, you know, how his patterns are kind of geared towards uh, towards the outcome that he, that he gets on the field. So uh, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below. Looking forward to hearing from you guys.